Hi, I'm Dr. Tanya here with Tuesday's tips to keep your family safe and healthy. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And part of my job as a pediatrician is to answer questions every day. And while I love answering parents' questions, it's even more fun to answer questions from kids because they are so cute and so inquisitive and they come up with the best questions. So today we asked children from all across the country to send in the questions that they have on the coronavirus pandemic. And I am going to answer them today. And hopefully you will all learn something and we will have a little bit of fun. And I'm so excited. So let's see what the first child has to say. Hi, my name is Pearl. I would like to know why the coronavirus makes you sick. That's a great question, Pearl, and viruses do infect our body, and some viruses don't make us very sick, but other viruses that are new and that our body's never seen before, such as the coronavirus, this new novel coronavirus, can make us much more sick, and it usually gets into your body through your eyes, nose, or mouth because you touch something and then touch those areas or somebody coughs or sneezes on you, and this specific virus is getting into our body and getting into our cells and then replicating and that's how it's causing damage and it's causing problems with lungs and it's causing problems with blood vessels and um, it's making some people really really sick now most of the kids that i'm seeing are not getting quite as sick and so that's a little bit of good news but they are getting headaches and fevers and aches and pains and runny nose and coughs that are lasting sometimes for a few days to a few weeks and so that's how viruses can get into our body and make us sick. And so the most important thing you can do is wash your hands and right now stay away from others. And when you are out in public, wear a mask and that will help protect everybody else from catching any viruses that you have. And it also will help protect you from catching viruses that other people have. Hi, my name is Lincoln Newmark. I am 10 years old and I have a question for you. What happens if you catch the coronavirus? Thank you. So Lincoln, when you catch the coronavirus, different things can happen. Some kids catch the coronavirus and they get no symptoms at all, but they still can share germs with friends, which is why we do have to be very careful. And right now, stay away from our friends and wash our hands. And when we go back to school, we may be wearing masks um, and we may be learning and playing on recess differently than we do now so we can still say, stay a distance away from our friends. When other people catch their coronavirus, they get more sick. Um, with some people, it can go down to their lungs and make it hard for their body to get oxygen. It can also cause a more serious infection such as pneumonia. And when some adults are getting coronavirus, it's causing problems with other organs in their body as well. And some are getting really, really sick and needing to go to the hospital. Luckily, there are um, doctors and scientists and nurses working really hard right now to figure out how to keep people who catch coronavirus from getting really sick and also to help prevent people from dying. And they're also working on a vaccine so that way we can hopefully protect you and everybody you know in the future from catching coronavirus. So this may be a vaccine that you go to your doctor's office for. And so that way, if you are exposed to the virus, your body will be able to fight it off um, and make antibodies, but not get sick. Hi, Dr. Tanya. Can you tell me how the coronavirus is spreading? Hi, Gabriella. The coronavirus is spreading from person to person, usually because somebody coughs or sneezes and it lands on somebody else's eyes, nose, or mouth, or they breathe it in, or somebody coughs or sneezes or breathes onto a surface that somebody else touches and then touches their own face, and that's how it gets into their body. Now, the good news is that the coronavirus is actually spreading less now because all of you are doing such a good job of staying home and not having play dates and not going to the parks. And the more that people stay away from each other, it's called social and physical distancing, the less the coronavirus can spread. And then it will slowly, slowly, slowly decrease in numbers and hopefully go away. The other way that you can 
decrease or prevent spreading is by washing your hands frequently, by not touching your face, and by wearing a mask when you do go outside or if your mom does take you to the doctor's office or she does need to take you somewhere out in public. So those are some ways that you can help decrease the spread of the coronavirus and let all your friends know too that this will eventually be over so you don't have to stay home forever. But right now the most important thing you can do is stay home. And thank you all for that. Hi, Dr. Tana. Can animals get the coronavirus? That's a great question, Ethan. As I know, you have pets at home, and many of my patients have pets at home as well. I have a bunny at my house. So we do think that the coronavirus, the new coronavirus, originated from an animal. Um, that said, it's usually passed from person to person. So although there have been a few cases of animals that were tested, and they did test positive for having coronavirus, we haven't seen any cases of animals or pets passing coronavirus on to the people who take care of them or to their owners. We actually think that maybe it happened the other way, where a person was sick and maybe they gave it to their pet. But so far, it looks like the pets that have had it are all doing fine. Um, but this is a good reason to keep your pet at home with you right now. And if you do get sick, again, keep your pet with you and don't let your pet go out to the neighbors or play with friends in the neighborhood just in case there's that small chance that you know your pet could share those germs. So otherwise, it's always a good idea to wash your hands when you're done playing with pets, um, especially other people's pets. And maybe right now when you're out in the neighborhood, maybe just stay a little bit of a distance from other pets in the neighborhood and just continue to cuddle with only your pets. Hi, Dr. Tony. Why do we have to wear a mask? Hi, Matthew. So as a pediatrician or a doctor, I often wear a mask to protect myself when I'm seeing sick kids who are coughing and sneezing. And that's a type of mask that's called an N95 mask and it has a really tight seal and that filters out particles so I can't breathe them in when my patients are sick. Those are also the same masks that I think your family wore during the fires in your area last fall. Right now, those masks are in very short supply and we're saving them for all the healthcare workers and the frontline people who are fighting against the pandemic who need it. So we're asking everybody else to wear any type of mask that you have that you can buy or that you could even make at home. And if you go to the CDC website, there are actually some great activities where you can make masks out of t-shirts, out of socks, out of bandanas, and so any mask that you wear that covers your mouth and your nose and fits pretty tightly can actually help protect you from sharing any germs that you might have with anyone in your community. So what happens is when someone is sick and they cough or sneeze or talk or breathe, tiny particles can fly through the air and infect other people. And with this virus, specifically with coronavirus, some people are spreading germs and infecting other people even when they don't have symptoms. And so this is why we're asking everybody to wear masks when they're outside in public. And when you go back to school in the fall, you may be asked to wear a mask as well. We don't know, we don't know yet what those guidelines are gonna look like, but we do know that masks are playing an important role for older kids, teenagers, and for adults in terms of decreasing the spread of coronavirus out in the community. Hi, Dr. Tanya, this is Kaya. Will I be able to go to camp this summer? Hi, Kaya. I hope you can go to summer camp this summer. I don't know exactly when that will be and where it will be. And summer camp may look a little different this summer than you might remember from past summers. So the goal of summer camp is of course to get kids together and to have fun and create memories. But we have to be able to do that this summer safely because of the current coronavirus pandemic. So the camps may be taking measures to decrease the number of sick people coming to camp. So they might make sure you don't have a fever. They might ask your parents lots of questions about when you've, if you've been sick recently. They may not run buses and they might stagger the drop off time so that way a lot of kids aren't coming in together. While you're in camp, the goal is gonna be to try to decrease the spread of germs from 
camper to camper. So they might group you in smaller groups. You might have 10 or 15 camp friends this summer and you do all your activities with them. So you go to the pool with them and you go to archery with them and you go horseback riding with them and you eat your meals with them, but you may not mingle with all the other groups of 10 or 15 campers just this summer because we're trying to decrease the spread of the virus. Also this summer, if anyone gets sick at camp, they might be a little faster to send you home, where in past summers you can stay with the nurse for a little while and see if you get better or not. If anyone gets sick this summer at camp, they might make you go home so your parents can take you to the doctor to make sure that you're okay. You don't have something that serious that you could share with your friends or that needs to be treated. But my hope is that the campers and the cities and the counselors and the doctors and the scientists and the parents are all going to work together to find out a safe way so our kids can have some sort of camp this summer. And it may not look exactly like it did during past summers, but it will be safe and it will be fun. So I hope you get that opportunity too. Hi, Dr. Altman. I'm wondering when can we go back to school? Um, I'm really, really missing my friends and my teachers, and I miss my school a lot. So when are we going to be done with this thing, coronavirus? Hi, Molly Rose. I know you are missing school. So many of my patients are, and my own boys are as well. And I'm so sorry that we had to close schools, but we did that because it was the safest move at the time to decrease the spread of coronavirus. And I know that schools across the country have been working really hard on ways to still teach kids and engage with kids through virtual learning. And so I hope you're getting some of that at your school, and actually I know you are. Um, so when can you go back to school? Well, I don't know that we're ready quite yet. So I don't know that any schools across the country are gonna be going back to the actual sitting in the classroom type of school that you're used to right now this spring. I think everybody is waiting until the end of the summer and the fall so that way we can really decrease the spread of coronavirus across our country. We can all get together and come up with the safest way and the best way to get kids back to school. And I know that's one of my goals right now, and I'm actually working with many schools, including yours, to figure out the safest way to get kids back to the classroom. And I really think you're going to be back in class this fall, but it's going to look a little different, similar to um, Kaya's question about camp. The drop-off procedures may be a little different, so that way not as many kids are arriving at the same time. We may be taking your temperature when you get to school, or we may just be asking your parents, you know, to check your temperature at home. Um, we may be having a different type of learning in the classroom where the kids stay in the classroom and the teachers and specialists rotate from class to class. Recess and sports might look a little different because you might stay with your smaller class group and you might do more non-contact sports, such as more running around and kicking the soccer ball. Um, and there's gonna be a lot more cleaning as well and a lot more hand washing. And you might be eating lunch in your classroom. And if anybody in your class gets sick, um, you might need to go to the nurse's office and get sent home a little more quickly so we can all jump in and figure out, you know, does anyone have anything serious that needs to be treated and how can we best not spread it to all of our friends? But we are working on a plan and coming up with a plan and hopefully over the next few months, schools across the country will be getting ready to open again, but it will be a new normal school day, a different school day, not forever, but for the next school year but it will still be fun and it will still be engaging and you will still learn a lot. And so I'm excited to see what all of the teachers and administrators and students come up with across the country. And I think we're all gonna learn a lot from the process. Hi, Dr. Tanya, I have a question. How did daddy get sicker than me with coronavirus? Hi, Aubrey, I'm sorry to hear that you and your daddy both had coronavirus. And I'm glad that you look healthy right now, and I hope that your daddy is doing well also. 
So in general, the coronavirus is affecting different people differently. And kids actually are, tend to get more mild illness than their parents. Right now, all the kids are home like you are. So what I'm seeing in my practice is that grandparents and parents are catching coronavirus when they're out in the community and bringing it home to everybody in their family. And that means a lot of my patients and kids are getting it as well. Now, luckily, none of my patients have been that sick. So I'm seeing that the kids have more mild symptoms. So like a fever for a day or two, maybe a cough for a few days, a sore throat, a little tired. But unfortunately, the coronavirus is affecting adults more severely. And we don't know exactly why. It probably has to do with the fact that your daddy has different receptors in his cells than you do. Or maybe your immune system is a little bit different because you're younger and you're stronger. Well, we know you're stronger than your daddy. Um, so it is affecting everybody differently. And that's why we're actually asking people that are older or that have underlying health conditions, such as heart problems or lung problems, to really stay home and be really good about social distancing and to wash their hands and to wear masks. And that's why a lot of kids aren't able to see their grandparents right now because we don't wanna spread germs to people who, who are older who might get sick more severely than the kids and they might end up in the hospital and get very seriously ill. So I hope that helps answer your question, but I'm glad that you are doing well. And I actually just heard that everybody in your family is actually also doing better. So I'm so thankful that none of you got seriously ill. And to Aubrey and all the other kids and families who sent in questions, thank you so much. These were all great questions and very important questions. Our kids do ask the best questions. They're so creative and inquisitive and they're thinking and they're learning and that's so important, especially at a time like we're in right now. These are times that our kids are gonna remember as they get older. And what they're gonna mainly remember is the time they spent at home with you, with their parents and the activities you did together and the memories that you made together. So I'm asking you all now to please spend time with your children and ask them how they feel and ask them what questions they have and then answer their questions and reassure them and show them that you love them because that's what's gonna help them all get through this and end up stronger and more resilient and with better memories in the end. Thanks for watching today. This is Dr. Tanya, and please follow me and tune in next Tuesday for more of my Dr. Tanya's Tuesday tips. Stay safe and healthy.